Okay, so how many people have heard of Microsoft Link? It's a product. Good, All right, big percentage, which means the marketeers are doing their job properly when we talk about some of this stuff. So a bit of history around Microsoft Link and Microsoft Unified Communications. So this is not new or a new technology to Microsoft, as Damien already alluded to. Now, we introduced a product called Live Communication Server 2005, funnily enough, back in 2005 as it went through. Now, this product went through several iterations and rebranded and evolved and extra capability and became Office Communication Server 2007, which also was launched in 2007. Then we had Office Communication Server 2007 R2. And the names were getting longer and longer and longer, right? To the extent where the guys couldn't print it on the media, on the DVDs anymore, because it just wouldn't fit. So the marketeers come together and they said, we need a new brand for this. Something that really envisions communicating. How people communicate, what are they looking to do? And so they brainstormed and everything else. And at the end of it all, they had a group of words on the screen. And one of them said link, L-I-N-K. The other one said sync, S-Y-N-C. And being such clever, highly paid marketeers and branders that they are, they put these two words together and we have Microsoft Link. All right, so if I want to communicate with somebody, I can link them. Hey, link me. This is what we do. So what is Link and what is Microsoft Unified Communications really trying to do and what's it trying to address? All right. So a bit of a lighthearted comment up on the screen there, but I think everybody will sort of appreciate where that's coming from. Technology through the years, as it's evolved through analog technology, digital technology, IP technology. When you look at communications and how people communicate, what it's really been about is about a device. Okay? It's been about a device, it's been about a number. All right? If I know somebody's phone number, I can call them from a device and their device rings. All right? I have no visibility if that person's there. Can they answer my phone call if I'm calling them? Should I try them on another phone call? Should I leave my voicemail there, voicemail on the mobile? Are there all these different methods and ways in which we communicate through devices, but it's not really this people-centric approach. So we took a step back and really said, why people want to communicate is because they need to achieve something. You know, I want to get an answer on a question, or I want to collaborate on a particular document, or something I need to do that needs me to communicate with this person. So really by changing the paradigm around from being about dial tone from a phone, right, to being about presence as being the enabler for everything that you do. So I talk about presence as being 21st century dial tone. If I know somebody's available, I'll communicate with them. If they're not available, I won't communicate with them. Or I'll find a different way of communicating with them or find somebody else that can help me right now so I get an instant decision. Right, so people are starting to get that. And what Link really delivers is really across these three key pillars. None of it is new technology fundamentally, but how it's used through a single interface and how it's delivered for the user is very, very different. So instant messaging goes hand in hand with presence. You know, if you look at users or consumers, everybody's familiar with a Skype or MSN or a Yahoo, those types of instant messaging engines. Interestingly enough, I sent my son, I've got a teenage son who's 16, who's my gauge and barometer around technical things and technology. And I sent him an email that I got from his tutor the other week asking about some homework that hadn't gone in, 16 year old boy, so it's common. And no response from the email right around that. When I chatted to him, he said, hey, dad, I don't use email to communicate with anyone that's young anymore. Right? I just use that to communicate with old people. All right. And that's a mindset that's coming through you know, the Gen Ys and the newer generation is, the first mode of communications that these people choose now is real-time text chat, right? be it Facebook chat or instant messaging, is coming to the fore. Now, when we've seen customers roll out Microsoft Link, by far the biggest single take-up and the adoption rate is a change in how people communicate by making IM the first port of call. If I want a quick, simple answer on something, I see if somebody's available with the right skill, I IM them, can you help me with this? Yep. I'll get an answer back. Right? So people get the value of IM, and it adds huge, huge business value once you roll this out everywhere. Now, not just in your own business, but also seeing presence of users outside of your own organization, suppliers, customers, bringing them all into the mix really drives the value of presence up exponentially. And we've already heard a couple of conversations earlier about video, right? And the value of video and what that really means around reducing travel and no longer need it being somewhere in person when it comes through. What we've done with Link is actually brought that together. So it's the same experience whether I want an audio call, if I want to make a video call, if I want to do a web call, it's just another click. That same familiar Office experience that I have, and right the way seeing presence through Office and through other applications, not just Microsoft applications, where I can click and I can communicate, video is as easy to use as is voice or those other methods. But 
to a means to an end, right? If I want to collaborate and share something and work on something together, video is an enabler for that that just brings me another modality closer. So how people choose to communicate is really dictated by what they're trying to achieve in here. Now, the third capability that mentions on there is enterprise voice and telephony, right? So I talk about, it's about the post-PBX era we're getting to now, right? Communications and PBX communications is evolving into software, all right? You don't need big hulks of equipment in the back room to drive a telephony environment. You know, it's no longer about a phone or a device. It's about the person and presence. Now, absolutely, that person's going to have devices to communicate on. You know, I've got a mobile phone, I've got a desk phone, I've got headsets and all that stuff. But it's what I use for the appropriate occasion on where I'm working or what I'm actually doing as it comes through there. So whilst we talk about Link is not a PBX, Link is absolutely, it is a full PBX replacement in what it delivers around that capability. So what's the business value in terms of where does that really map back to when you look at that stuff? And I just highlighted three areas on there. Now, reducing costs, we've heard about video and not traveling. Think about this in other areas. In Microsoft in the Netherlands, the same time as we rolled out Link internally to all our users, I think we had about four or 500 users in our Amsterdam office in there. Right? We've done a big building refit at the same time. Okay? So we went to new funky offices, big brightly colored sofas, fireman's poles to go between the floors and all of that cool stuff right, that you have in the building. What they didn't take into account is by giving Link to every user, now the fact without any VPNs or without any other software or hardware, wherever they open up their laptop or wherever they are on an internet connection, they have full communications capability. Voice, video, IM, the whole works. Suddenly geography became irrelevant for how people worked. No longer did they actually need to go into the office, you know? They didn't need to go to that particular cubicle because that's where their phone was. Now they could work from anywhere. And so what they had was occupancy rates of that building in excess of 60% prior to the refurb and rolling out of Link dropped down to 22% when they put the technology in. Because people could work from anywhere, they did work from anywhere. So in Amsterdam, everybody was obviously working from internet cafes, which obviously has a lot more benefit than certain other parts of the world if you want to go and work on a cafe as it goes through there. Adoption is critical around these types of technology. When you look at unified communications, and as I mentioned, you know, video, voice, web conferencing, PBX stuff, I'm in presence isn't new. But making it through a single platform or a single interface for a user, so it is just one click or two clicks to do anything, is very, very different. I don't need to go and learn a whole different tool set of capability when I want to make a video call or when I want to do a voice call or an IM. It's the same experience for every single user. Now, to make any UC deployment successful, that is absolutely critical part of this. As is making it easy to deploy and easy to interoperate. So, you know, as customers, we see them with existing phone systems, with PBXs, with video platforms. It's not a case of having to throw this stuff away and start from scratch. It's how I can actually have a nice integration so that stuff does work, so I can get that you know, legacy PBX stuff working while I evolve over time or sweat the asset for a bit longer and move to this new way of communicating as it comes through. Now, it's easy for me to say all that stuff. So some quotes from some customers who have deployed this type of technology. Okay. Tasmania state government. For them, the defining moment around success was when the main receptionist in there who used to update all the phone number lists and send them out monthly, you know, all the people who have left the business and joined, you know, the new phone numbers, etc. She sent out an email across the whole organization, Tasmania State Government, saying, I'm no longer going to be sending out the telephone number update list because nobody is asking for it anymore. To them, that meant people were actually communicating with people and it was about presence because nobody needed to know a number anymore. All right? so that was a state of success. Commonwealth Bank of Australia. Friday afternoon, Everybody went home from work. They hit the deploy button and pushed out the link client to every single user around the organization. No formal user training had been done in advance of this. When they rolled up on the Monday, they had a greater than a 60% adoption rate inside the first 24 hours, all right, using all of that capability, which is testament to how easy it is as a technology to actually use and adopt, which I mentioned is a critical part of it. More locally, on this side of the Tasman, so you know, with GenI, New Plymouth District Council, have now done away entirely with all of the PBXs and have moved to a full link software deployment. Now we get some great quotes when we go out and speak to you know, customers and you know, talk about case studies and the like. And you know, I think the quote from the CIO there was, you know, Link delivers this quantum leap in connectivity and collaborations for the council. What we also do when we do these case studies is we speak to user groups around the business. 
And one of the user groups we spoke to, I think it was HR or finance, and we just interviewed you know, someone in there and said to them, you know, what's Link really delivered for you? What's the business benefit? And uh, again, a bit of a lighthearted comment around, but come back was that, you know, this is the first application our IT team have rolled out that actually adds any value to what I do. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. All right. It is a very, very sticky technology, and everybody gets it straight away and adopts it straight away. Now, we look at Z Energy, what they've done, again, you know, with Genoi around it. Everybody's sort of buzzing, and there's an excitement that grows when you put out this technology. If you do a pilot as a customer and you give it to a select group of users, you try and get that client back to them within 30 days' time. They'll fight tooth and nail to keep that stuff, and it grows and adopts very, very quickly as it moves forward. Some of the reasons that's the case is probably more than any other Microsoft product we have, Link is the most agnostic when it comes to network and when it comes to device or platform when it comes on. Absolutely, as you would expect, we have a Link PC client where I get the full Link experience. And again, we can demo that out there in the room afterwards if you want to see some of this capability in more detail. We also have, identically looking, a Mac client. Not a great screenshot up there, but it looks exactly the same as the PC one. There is a browser client, not just Microsoft Internet Explorer, supported on Chrome, Firefox, Safari, all of the major browsers that are out there. In December just gone, we launched a bunch of Microsoft-coded Link clients. Now, Scott from Nokia is going to talk about, if you're lucky enough to see one of the new Lumia 800 running uh, Microsoft Windows Mobile platform on there across these devices. Yet, we did launched a client for Link for this. We also launched a client for iOS, for iPhone, for iPad, for Android, for any Android 2.3 devices and above when it comes through there, and Symbian devices as well. All right? so, Again, regardless of what device you have, you can have that same familiar look, feel, experience on any of those devices as you would do across a Microsoft client or PC device. That also applies to the phones. You know, when you have a PBX platform, well, I said at the start, it's not about devices, right? It's about people. But some users still prefer to have a phone on the desktop that they use to make and receive calls. Yeah, there's Link phones made by a bunch of Microsoft partners that provide these devices. The software that runs on all of those phones is provided and coded by Microsoft. So regardless of which vendor you buy from or which device you buy, again, that experience is identical all the way across. I see presence. I see my contacts list. I even have my Outlook calendar integrated to my desk phone with a one-click button to join a meeting when it pops up as a reminder on my phone screen. Bang. No need to remember my conference ID and my attendee ID and my leader ID and all of that stuff you, know, you need to key in when it goes through. It's just a single click straight from the phone device. Now, about six months ago, when I was down the back of the sofa, because I couldn't find my wallet, and I was hunting for four bucks to go and buy a coffee. It was actually five bucks in, over there, not four bucks, actually, in the Geno, Geno room in here. But I go in there, go, great, find my four dollars, go buy my coffee. Exactly the same day, funnily enough, Bill Gates went down the back of the sofa and found 8.4 billion in loose change. and said, hey, I'm going to go and buy Skype. Um, a lot of people have questions, well, what, why have Microsoft bought Skype? What does that really mean? Why have you done that stuff? If you look at Skype as a brand, it's one of sort of half a dozen brands there today. And this is a little bit dated, this slide, so the numbers have grown substantially. That has more than 100 million active users engaged on the application for more than 100 minutes a month. All right, so actively engaged on that all that time. Pretty significant, right? There's only a sort of few other brands that really drive that type of interaction across the internet as it goes in. Skype is also by far the biggest carrier of telco voice and video traffic globally. 22% of all international voice traffic is carried by Skype today. All right. The next biggest carrier is AT&T with about 9%. We're around those numbers. All right. Has significant reach when we look at you know, where it is in terms of as a consumer brand. You know? If I said who's used Skype, it'd probably be ubiquitous. Everybody's used it or tried it or played with that stuff. Of all those calls that are happening internationally, nearly 50% also carry video on the mix as well. So Skype opens up a whole new set of doors for us in terms of capability. And whilst I'm not here to talk about any specifics that we may be offering moving forward, think about the vision where out of the box experience as a consumer, Skype is an embedded part of Microsoft Windows or Microsoft Office. All right? So it just becomes part of that whole experience and how I can communicate when it moves through. When you think about Link and about presence and me working on my Link client in the enterprise or in the business, being as easy to click and call a Skype user as it is to call a colleague who's in the next office, 
okay, with voice, with video, with all of that other capability. And likewise, when you think about Xbox, how it can also play and come and be part of that whole communications experience. So really what we're saying is it really gives us the opportunity to take down these boundaries that were there between, if you like, the consumer and the business, and now it really blends and merges all of that capability together. So there's really some significant offerings there you'll see coming forward in time. So that's all I can really squeeze inside 15 minutes um, to talk about you know, Microsoft Link. I would say encourage you to come and have a look and feel and play the technology because it is one of those types of things you need to see and feel and understand to really get what it means. And I'll be around for a while with drinks afterwards so for any questions. And in short, make sure you've got your, your card in the box. I think it's an Xbox 360 and Connect bundle which we have to give away at the end there as a prize as well. And so with that, I'll pass back to Damien.